children and a happy feast of Christ our King. With this Sunday, we come to the end of the church liturgical year and we enthrone the victorious Christ as King in heaven in all his glory. While instituting this feast of Christ the King, in 1925, Pope Pius XI proclaimed, the peace of Christ in the reign of Christ. In Latin, Pax Christi and Regno Christi. This means that we live in the peace of Christ when we surrender our lives to Him every day. Accept Him as our God, Savior and King and allow Him to rule our lives. In the middle of St. Peter's Square in Rome, there stands a great obelisk. It is about four and a half thousand years old and it originally stood in the Temple of the Sun in ancient Egyptian city of Heliopolis. But it was brought to Rome by the dreadful Emperor Caligula and it was set right in the middle of circus of Nero, an equally dreadful place that was in the Vatican Hill. It was in that circus that Saint Peter was martyred and the oblix may well have been the last thing on this earth that Peter saw. On top of the oblix there now stands a cross. In ancient times there was a gold ball representing of course the sun. Now there is a cross however, the cross of Christ. And on the pedestal of the obelisk there are two inscriptions. The first of them when translated from Latin means Christ has conquered, Christ now rules, Christ now reigns supreme. Latin Christus Vincent Christus Regna Christus Emperor The other inscription is The Lion of Judah has conquered. So here we have the language of victory. Christianity has triumphed by the power of the cross and triumphed over even the greatest power that the ancient world had known, the Roman Empire. And here, in the middle of St. Peter's Square, stands the oblix bearing these triumphant inscriptions. The church calendar, Christ the King, is a parallel of the Cricket World Cup final with India playing. In terms of the excitement and importance, as mentioned before, the church's liturgical year concludes with the feast of the Christ the King, instituted by Pope Pius XI in 1925 to celebrate the Jubilee year and the 16th centenary of the Council of Nicaea. This feast was established and proclaimed by the Pope to reassert the sovereignty of Christ and church over all the forms of government and to remind Christians of the fidelity and loyalty they owe to Christ, who by his incarnation and sacrificial death on the cross had made them both adopted children of God and future citizens and heirs of the kingdom of heaven. The feast was also a reminder to the then totalitarian governments of Mussolini, Hitler and Stalin that Jesus Christ is the only sovereign king. Christ is a spiritual king and ruler who rules by truth and love. We declare our loyalty to him by the quality of our Christian commitment expressed in our serving of others with sacrificial and forgiving love and by our solidarity with the poor. Although emperors 
and kings with real ruling power exist today only in history books we nevertheless honor christ as a king of the universe and a king of our hearts by allowing him to take control of our lives in thousands of human hearts all over the world jesus still reigns as a king the cross is his throne and the sermon on the mount his rule of law his citizens need only obey only one major law love god with all your being and love others as i have loved you his love is selfless compassionate forgiving and unconditional he is a king with a saving and liberating mission free us from all types of bondage enabling us to live peacefully and happily on earth and promising us an inheritance in the eternal life of heaven let us now look at some of the biblical bases of the feast let's begin with the old testament texts the title christ the king has its roots both in scripture and in the whole theology of the kingdom of god in most of the messianic prophecies given in the old testament books of samuel isaiah jeremiah and daniel christ the messiah is represented as a king in the new testament texts we see some of these references at the annunciation recorded in luke 1 verse 32 to 33 we read the lord god will make him a king as his ancestor david was and he will be the king of the descendants of jacob forever and his kingdom will never end in fact the kingdom of god is the center of jesus' teaching and the phrase kingdom of god occurs in the gospels 122 times of which 90 instances are is used by jesus from the far east came to jerusalem and asked the question matthew chapter 2 verse 2 Where is the baby born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star and we have come to worship him. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 31 we read that Christ the king will come in glory to judge us on the day of the last judgment. During the royal reception given to Jesus on Palm Sunday the Jews shouted Luke chapter 19 verse 38 God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord During the trial of Jesus Pilate asked the question John chapter 18 verses 33 to 37 Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You say that I am a king. I was born and came into this world for this one purpose, to bear witness to the truth. The sign board hung over Jesus' head on the cross. John chapter 19 verse 19 read Jesus the Nazarene king of the Jews Finally just before his ascension into heaven Jesus declared Matthew 28 verse 18 I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth If we were to ask ourselves 
What is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of Christ the King? Here is a beautiful explanation given by Gerald Daring from St. Louis University, the Center for Liturgy. Firstly, the kingdom of God is a space. It exists in every home where parents and children love each other. It exists in every region and country that cares for its weak and vulnerable. It exists in every parish that reaches out to the needy. Secondly, the kingdom of God is a time. It happens whenever someone feeds a hungry person or shelters a homeless person or shows care to a neglected person. It happens whenever we overturn an unjust law or correct an injustice or avert a war. It happens whenever people join in the struggle to overcome poverty, to erase ignorance and to pass on the faith. The kingdom of God is in the past. We see it in the life and work of Jesus of Nazareth. It is in the present. We see it in the work of the church and in the efforts of many others who create a world of goodness and justice. It is in the future, reaching its completion in the age to come. Thirdly, the kingdom of God is a condition. Its symptoms are love, justice and peace. Jesus Christ is King. We pray today that God may free all the world to rejoice in His peace, to glory in His justice, to live in His love. We now invite you to take up a prayerful posture. Close your eyes. Clear your mind of all distractions. Calm yourself by breathing in and out, in and out. Focus on your breathing. And as we do that, prepare our hearts to listen to the word of God. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 33 to 37. Then Pilate, entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you continue to stay calm, Reflect on these points. We need to assess our commitment to Christ the King today. As we celebrate the Kingship of Christ today, let us remember the truth that He is not our King if we do not listen to Him, love Him, serve Him and follow Him. We belong to His Kingdom only when we try to walk with Him, when we try to live our lives 
fully in the spirit of the gospel and when that gospel spirit penetrates every facet of our living we need to give jesus control over our lives today's feast of christ the king reminds us of the great truth that christ must be in charge of our lives that we must give him sovereign power over our bodies our thoughts our heart and our will let us ask ourselves the question what does jesus my king want me to do or say in this situation are we praying each day that our king will give us the right words to say to the people we meet that day words that will make us true ambassadors of jesus we need to follow christ the king's lesson of humble service to the truth christ has come to serve and to be of service to others hence we are called to his service service to the truth whatever we do for his children and our sisters and brothers we do for him we need to obey the law of love of christ the king citizens of christ kingdom are expected to observe only one major law the law of love love god with your whole heart and love your neighbor as yourself if you love me you will keep my commandments jesus expects a higher degree of love from his followers love one another as i have loved you on this great feast of christ the king let us resolve to give him the central place in our lives and promise to obey his commandment of love by sharing what we have with all his needy children word of god we thank our king for these and his other gifts to us our response will be Thank you, Lord, for all you've done, things both great and small. And for Jesus Christ, your Son, thank you most of all. Please repeat. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done, things both great and small. And for Jesus Christ your son thank you most of all for the gift of life for the joys of family for the comfort of a roof over our heads for the company of friends for the fulfillment of an occupation we say thank you lord for all you've done things both great and small and for Jesus Christ your son thank you most of all for the gift of our baptism for the church to which we belong for the holy eucharist for the priest the religious those who serve in the various ministries of our parish we say Thank you Lord for all you've done things both great and small and for Jesus Christ your son thank you most of all for the holy father the bishops priests and religious for those who impart the faith for those who bring us closer to god we say thank you lord for all you've done things both great and small 
and for Jesus Christ, your Son, thank you most of all. For the water, for the food, for the refreshment and entertainment, for the transportation, for those who serve in public office, for those who clean our streets, for those who transact business, we say, Thank you, Lord, for all you've done, things both great and small. And for Jesus Christ, your Son, thank you most of all. For the comforts we have, for the care and protection we enjoy, for information and communication, for the health we enjoy. We say, Thank you, Lord, for all you've done, things both great and small. And for Jesus Christ, your Son, thank you most of all. For the many things that we are blessed with and fail to remember, we thank the Lord, saying, Thank you, Lord, for all you've done, things both great and small. And for Jesus Christ, your Son, thank you most of all. We now silently place our petitions before our King. Lord Jesus, we have come to spend this time with you. We praise and worship you, Christ our King. You are the most powerful, awesome, magnificent God. You and you alone are worthy of all praise. Your name has power. Your name saves. Your name gives confidence and hope. We bring to you ourselves, our families, our communities, our parish, and our world. We welcome you as our King, our Lord, our Saviour. We place all our hope and trust in you, so that your kingdom of peace and love and justice may flourish. Amen. Hello children, it is time now for you to put your thoughts and responses into action. Let's try to recall the reality TV shows that have judges on them such as numerous dance and singing shows. You will notice that on these shows the judges make responsible decisions to ensure that the people and the participants get what they deserve. This Sunday, in the Gospel passage, Jesus tells us a story about a king who passes final judgment on people. You have to refer to the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 46. Based on this gospel passage, you have to answer two questions. The first question is, what does the king base his judgments on? The second question is, how does the king respond when the people ask, when we saw you hungry or naked? This Sunday, we are celebrating the feast of Christ the King. Jesus tells us the story of final judgment to show us what kind of king he is. He is not interested in power and glory, but 
in serving the needs of others. Since Christ is our King and we are his loyal subjects, we are called to strive to imitate him and to live according to his will. Based on this learning, we have a final activity for you to do, an imagination exercise. Imagine that you are a queen or a queen, king only for a day and tell us the 10 top decisions you will take when you are made the king or queen of the world. Write this down and send it to your Sunday school teacher along with the responses to the two questions. Bye for now and we look forward to connecting with you soon.